Known as a legendary figure in 1970s movies, Robert Wagner enjoyed a remarkable career until it took a drastic turn in 1981. His life faced a profound upheaval when he became a suspect in the puzzling death of his wife, Natalie Wood. The aftermath of this mysterious incident severely impacted his acting opportunities. Now, in old age, Wagner's life is still haunted by the shadow of that tragic night. In this video, we'll delve into the complete and heart-wrenching story of Robert Wagner and the sorrowful turn his life has taken. As Robert Wagner is now over 90, try not to gasp when you see him today. Robert Wagner's Early Life Robert Wagner, known as Robert John Wagner Jr., came into the world on February 10, 1930, in Detroit, Michigan. His early years were shaped by the support and guidance of his parents, Hazel Alvera and Robert John Wagner Sr., during a challenging period of the Great Depression. Growing up in Detroit, Wagner faced the difficulties of the times, and his family background instilled in him a strong sense of resilience and determination. These qualities, which would later become evident in his career, were cultivated in his formative years. Hazel Alvera and Robert John Wagner Sr. played crucial roles in molding their son's character, influencing his values, work ethic, and approach to life and acting. The dynamics within the Wagner household contributed to the warmth and charisma that defined Robert Wagner both on and off the screen. Detroit, a bustling city with a rich history and cultural diversity, left its mark on Wagner's upbringing. The industrial landscape and thriving art scene in the city likely ignited his early interest in the performing arts, setting the stage for his future career in Hollywood. Essentially, Robert Wagner's birth into the Wagner family in Detroit laid the groundwork for the attributes that defined him. A mix of Midwestern values, resilience in the face of adversity, and a deep passion for performance. These qualities paved the way for his illustrious career in the entertainment industry, and his upbringing provided the framework upon which he built a successful and enduring legacy in film and television. Wagner's entry into the world of cinema at the age of 18 marked the beginning of a remarkable journey in the entertainment industry. Wagner's Struggle for Success In the youthful days of Wagner, little did he fathom the profound currents of tragedy that were poised to shape the course of his narrative. As he embarked on the journey of his budding acting career, originally fueled by starry-eyed dreams, fate unfurled a shadow of misfortune over him. This expedition, which commenced with aspirations of stardom, unfolded against a backdrop rife with unforeseen challenges. The genesis of Wagner's aspirations can be traced back to an initial setback, a thwarted screen test for Fred Zinman's film, Teresa, in the year 1951. However, the wheels of fortune began to turn in his favor when he serendipitously found representation in the form of Albert R. Broccoli. This fortuitous connection would go on to mold his destiny within the tumultuous terrain of Hollywood. Wagner's entrance into the cinematic realm was marked by an uncredited, quiet debut during the blissful years of 1950. Under the guiding hand of agent Henry Wilson, and armed with a contract from 20th Century Fox, he embarked on a path that seamlessly intertwined the allure of the silver screen with the harsh, unyielding realities of the industry. At the tender age of 19, Wagner, the boy next door, deftly navigated the cutthroat world of Hollywood. This environment was characterized by an ambitious pursuit to ascend the ranks, orchestrated by Daryl Zanuck, the head of Fox. Constantly reshuffled into different roles, Wagner's journey resembled a carousel, a whirlwind of aspirations and challenges. The initial years at Fox witnessed Wagner in supporting roles in war epics such as Halls of Montezuma, in 1951, and The Frogmen in 1951, where he shared the screen with established luminaries like Richard Widmark. Ventures into comedies such as Let's Make It Legal 1951 saw him paired with the likes of Claudette Colbert, showcasing his versatility as an actor. However, the breakthrough moment for Wagner materialized with With a Song in My Heart 1952. In this film, he portrayed a shell-shocked soldier, earning him the attention and recognition he had ardently sought throughout his burgeoning career. As Wagner delved into the challenging life of a contract player at Fox, he found himself caught in the whirlwind of constant activity, 
His days were filled with promoting films and gracefully dancing on stage, all to connect with the audience. As Fox began to recognize Wagner's untapped potential, he gradually transitioned into more substantial roles. Emerging as the romantic lead in Stars and Stripes Forever in 1952, and supporting legendary actors like James Cagney and Clifton Webb in What Price Glory in 1952 and Titanic in 1953 respectively, Wagner's career gained momentum. However, amidst the promise of success, tragedy loomed in the shadows, intricately woven into the demanding and relentless nature of the entertainment industry. Tragedy continued to thread its way through Wagner's cinematic journey as he reached for stardom, grappling with the unpredictable nature of fame and fortune. Recognizing his potential, Fox bestowed upon him his first starring role in Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef in 1953. Despite facing poor reviews, the film made history as only the third ever shot in Cinemascope, proving to be a commercial success, but leaving Wagner in the shadows of critical acclaim. In the realm of westerns, Wagner stood beside the legendary Spencer Tracy in Broken Lance in 1954, portraying Tracy's son and showcasing his versatility as an actor. Eager to elevate Wagner to leading man status, Fox cast him in the extravagant spectacle Prince Valiant in 1954. Though popular among audiences, the film faced critical disdain, prompting Wagner to humorously reflect on his experience. Borrowed by Paramount for The Mountain in 1956, Wagner continued to demonstrate his acting prowess in diverse roles. However, it was his lead performance in A Kiss Before Dying in 1956 that finally garnered critical acclaim, marking a pivotal moment in his cinematic journey. Despite the warm reception from audiences, achieving true commercial success remained an elusive goal for Wagner. Upon his return to Fox, he took on starring roles in two films, Between Heaven and Hell in 1956, a war movie, and The True Story of Jesse James in 1957, directed by Nicholas Ray. Despite their potential, both films fell short of expectations at the box office, marking a challenging period for Wagner in his pursuit of reaching the highest echelons of stardom. His lead role in Stop Over Tokyo in 1957 highlighted the challenges of navigating a transforming Hollywood landscape. This era was characterized by the growing influence of television and shifting dynamics in filmmaking. Wagner's efforts to revitalize his career involved taking on supporting roles in The Hunters in 1958 and In Love and War in 1958, with varying degrees of success. Collaborating with his wife, Natalie Wood, whom he had married in 1957, their joint venture in All the Fine Young Cannibals in 1960 proved futile failing to connect with audiences. Amidst the struggles, Wagner and Wood established Rona Productions in 1961, envisioning it as a means to redefine their careers. Unfortunately, setbacks persisted, with the failure of Sail a Crooked Ship in 1961, and the promised film Solo was never realized. The Camaros, originally intended for Wagner, proceeded without him, featuring John Wayne and Stuart Whitman instead. As Wagner navigated the tumultuous waters of Hollywood, the tragic undercurrents of unrealized potential and missed opportunities continued to shape his narrative. This journey left a trail of unfulfilled promises and shattered aspirations. Reflecting on his debut in the theatrical realm, he secured the lead role in Mr. Roberts. However, this engagement was fleeting, lasting just one week at a holiday resort near Chicago, signaling the challenges that lay ahead in the world of theater. Meanwhile, the theatrical realm turned out to be a domain where Wagner's talents didn't quite sync up smoothly. Thankfully, this realization led him gratefully back to the familiar embrace of Hollywood. Returning to the cinematic landscape, Wagner discovered comfort and opportunity. He snagged a notable supporting role in the 1966 hit Harper, a modern-day private investigator story that starred the iconic Paul Newman. This particular juncture marked a significant turning point in Wagner's career, reaffirming his standing in Hollywood and laying the groundwork for future adventures. Wagner's Romantic Entanglement Within the emotionally charged pages of his memoirs, 
Wagner unfolds the tragic tapestry of his romantic involvements. This narrative is intricately woven with threads of passion, secrecy, and eventual despair. The confessions divulge a series of love affairs with iconic Hollywood figures, including Ivan DiCarlo, Joan Crawford, Elizabeth Taylor, Anita Ekberg, Shirley Anfield, Lori Nelson, and Joan Collins. Amidst these passionate liaisons, Wagner unravels a particularly poignant chapter, a covert four-year romance with the luminous Barbara Stanwyck. This clandestine affair was sparked during their collaboration on the film Titanic in 1953. Intensely emotional, the affair was shrouded in secrecy, with the delicate fabric of their connection threatened by the considerable age gap. A 22-year-old Wagner entwined with a 45-year-old Barbara Stanwyck. The necessity of concealment, driven by the fear of career ruin, added a bitter undertone to their love story. The tragic symphony of Wagner's romantic life takes another haunting turn with rumors of affairs with men, a stark contrast to his public self-identification as a heterosexual man. The whispers of clandestine trysts with same-sex partners add layers of complexity to his narrative, echoing the societal constraints and personal struggles of that era. Robert Wagner's Marital Affairs and His Divorces Back in 1956, at the tender age of 26, Wagner ventured into a new chapter of his life by falling head over heels for the 18-year-old actress Natalie Wood. Their union was commemorated with a joyous marriage on December 28, 1957, in Scottsdale, Arizona. At first glance, it seemed like a promise of tranquility, a departure from the tumultuous affairs of the past. However, the shadows of tragedy cast a looming presence over their story. The crescendo of sorrow unfolds as reports emerge that, during the first half of 1961, Wood discovered Wagner entangled in an extramarital affair with another man within the walls of their shared home. This revelation shattered the facade of marital bliss, plunging their relationship into a heart-wrenching abyss. Unable to mend the irreparable rift, the couple publicly declared their separation on June 20, 1961. The final dolorous note of their tragic tale was struck with the divorce that followed on April 27, 1962. Against the backdrop of European film locations, Wagner's tumultuous romantic saga takes another heart-wrenching turn. Reuniting with a familiar face from his past, actress Marr and Marshall, Wagner found solace in their companionship, which blossomed into a two-year courtship. Eventually, Wagner Marshall and her two sons from a previous marriage to Stanley Donan returned to the shores of America. In a humble ceremony at the Bronx Courthouse on July 21, 1963, Wagner and Marshall exchanged vows, embarking on a new chapter as husband and wife. The union brought forth the joy of parenthood with the birth of their daughter, Katie, in 1964. However, the strains in their relationship began to surface, casting a tragic shadow over their once happy family. In June 1970, Wagner and Marshall confronted the painful reality of separation, leading to the dissolution of their marriage on October 14, 1971. The echoes of heartbreak lingered, painting a vivid picture of shattered dreams and fractured bonds. Following his subsequent engagement to Tina Sinatra from June 1971 to January 1972, it seemed like Wagner was making attempts to mend the wounds of the past. However, fate intervened, and he found himself irresistibly drawn back into the gravitational pull of a former love. The rekindling of romance with Natalie Wood, his former wife, unfolded against the maritime backdrop of the Ramblin' Rose anchored off Paradise Cove in Malibu. On July 16th, the couple exchanged vows once again, their hearts tethered by the undying ties of love. This reunion brought forth the birth of their daughter, Courtney, in 1974, a symbol of renewed hope and commitment. Wagner, known for his courtly demeanor, was the kind of person who would send flowers to his dates and diligently remember the birthdays of his co-stars. However, this very affability, according to his future wife Natalie Wood, resulted in a perception of him as sweet but rather boring. Wanger's Tragic Turn 
In the glamorous world of Hollywood, where scandal and unpredictability often take center stage, Wagner appeared an unlikely candidate to be entangled in the unpleasantness that occasionally gripped the industry. However, fate took a tragic turn, catching everyone by surprise, including those who knew him as the epitome of Hollywood decorum. At the age of 78, Wagner found himself immersed in a narrative that defied the expectations set by his genteel persona. The once polished and seemingly predictable gentleman was now the author of a candid account that detailed his dark urges, including a shocking desire to murder none other than Warren Beatty. This revelation thrust him into the center of one of the more macabre modern mysteries surrounding movie stars. It was a stark departure from the image of the refined Hollywood gentleman that had defined his earlier years. The tragedy that befell Robert Wagner's life and shattered his nice guy image unfolded with the death of his wife, Natalie Wood, in 1981. Wagner, who had basked in the glow of Hollywood for three decades, portraying handsome, wholesome, all-American hero roles, found himself plunged into a narrative of heart-wrenching loss and lingering mystery. Wagner's Worst Nightmare on the fateful night of November 29, 1981, an air of mystery cloaked the tragic end of Natalie Wood, creating an atmosphere of suspense near or within a mile of the yacht splendor, which was anchored close to the isthmus of Santa Catalina Island. The vessel played host to a solemn gathering, including Wood's husband, Robert Wagner, her co-star Christopher Wallen from the film Brainstorm, and Dennis Davern, the captain of the splendor. Notably absent from the group was Wagner's wife, Jorgan, a detail that would later inject an additional layer of intrigue into the unfolding events. According to Wagner's account, Wood was noticeably missing when he retired for the night. His spokesperson suggested the belief that she had ventured out alone on a small inflatable boat, a practice she had engaged in before. However, the grim reality soon overshadowed the yacht when Wood's lifeless body was discovered approximately a mile away, while the inflatable boat lay stranded nearby. The autopsy report, a chilling chronicle of that ominous night, unveiled a disturbing narrative. Wood displayed 39 fresh bruises on her body, including an abrasion on her left cheek. In his later memoir, Pieces of My Heart, Wagner reluctantly admitted to an argument with Wood before her disappearance. He claimed to have calmed down and retired to bed, but the autopsy revealed a blood alcohol content of 0.14% in Wood's system, along with traces of two medications, a motion sickness pill and a painkiller, that intensified the effects of alcohol. Amidst the shadows of that tragic night, two witnesses from a nearby boat emerged with haunting accounts. They affirmed hearing a woman's desperate scream for help, a chilling echo that lingered in the aftermath of the darkness. Nevertheless, the official investigation, spearheaded by Los Angeles County Coroner Thomas Noguchi, ultimately concluded that Natalie Wood's death was accidental, ascribed to drowning and hypothermia. Initially, Robert Wagner, Christopher Wallen, and Splendor Captain Dennis provided a consistent account to detectives, asserting that Wood had departed in a dinghy to head ashore. However, the slumbering embers of the past burst into flames anew on November 2011, when Dennis Davern publicly admitted to having lied to the police during the initial investigation. This explosive revelation dramatically altered the course of the inquiry. Davern claimed that on that ill-fated evening, a heated argument had erupted between Wood, Wagner, and Wallin. He alleged that Wagner, consumed by jealousy and rage over Wood's perceived flirtation with Wallin, played a sinister role in her disappearance. According to Davern, Wagner not only hindered him from activating the searchlights and alerting authorities, but was also responsible for Wood's tragic demise. In a surprising turn of events, Los Angeles County Chief Coroner Lakshmanan Satyavagaswaran amended Wood's death certificate in 2012, changing the cause from accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. This revised document underscored the murky circumstances surrounding how Wood ended up in the water, emphasizing that they were not established. A 10-page addendum to Wood's autopsy report, issued on January 14, 2013, further deepened the mystery, suggesting that some of the bruises on her body might have occurred before she entered the water. The plot thickened on February 1, 2018, 
When the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department identified Robert Wagner as a person of interest in the ongoing investigation into Natalie Wood's death, Wagner vehemently denied any involvement in his wife's tragic demise, maintaining his innocence against the mounting suspicions and accusations. Over the next quarter century, Wagner chose silence over disclosure, navigating a path through suspicion and innuendo. Even though he worked hard to rebuild his career and started a new chapter in marriage, the shadow of that unforgettable night lingered heavily behind Robert Wagner's once brightly shining smile. The charming grin that had been a defining feature for him now carried the burden of an unresolved tragedy. The shroud of silence that surrounded the incident was finally lifted when Wagner poured his heart out in his autobiography, Pieces of My Heart. Within the pages of this revealing memoir, he not only tells his side of the heartbreaking story, but also peels back the layers of the intricate circumstances that unfolded on that fateful night. Wagner's New Romantic Saga On a romantic Valentine's Day in 1982, a fresh chapter began in the love story of actor Robert Wagner. After years of familiarity, he embarked on a new romantic journey with seasoned actress Jill St. John. This connection had its roots in the late 1950s when they were both contract players at Fox. An early photograph from 1959 embedded in Wagner's memoir beautifully captures the essence of their enduring bond. The narrative of their love story unfolded over eight years, marked by shared experiences and the trials of life. Finally, on May 26, 1990, Wagner and St. John exchanged vows, embracing matrimony. This union wasn't their first attempt at marital bliss. It marked the fourth marriage for both individuals. Remarkably, their shared journey surpassed the combined duration of their six previous marriages, highlighting the strength of their connection. Throughout the years, the couple not only navigated the intricacies of marriage, but also collaborated professionally. They shared the screen in six films spanning from 1967 to 2014, primarily composed of low-budget productions. Additionally, their on-screen chemistry spilt over into the television realm, where they appeared together in the inaugural episode of Heart to Heart. The duo also showcased their acting prowess on stage in 1996, when they participated in a production of Love Letters. Meanwhile, in the grand fabric of life, Wagner experienced the joy of becoming a first-time grandfather in 2006. His daughter with a previous partner, Katie Wagner, welcomed a son named Riley John Wagner Lewis into the world, marking a new generation of the Wagner family. However, tragedy lurked in the shadows. In August 2007, a significant chapter of their shared history came to an end as Wagner and St. John bid farewell to the Brentwood Ranchette, their abode since 1983, as it changed hands for a reported $14 million. The couple's move wasn't just about changing locations, it marked a turning point in the story of their life together. They decided to make Aspen, Colorado their new home, where they had built a vacation house back in 1995. Aspen's breathtaking scenery became the fresh backdrop to their lives, offering a different setting from what they were used to. Yet, during this change, a condo in Los Angeles served as a lasting link to their past. It was a reminder of the memories and experiences they had in the city, creating a bridge between their current chapter in Aspen and the chapters that unfolded in Los Angeles. Wagner's Success in Film Career In the year 1966, Wagner entered into a significant agreement with Universal Pictures, marking the beginning of a collaboration that would intertwine with his personal life. His on-screen partnership with Jill St. John in films such as How I Spent My Summer Vacation and Banning took an unexpected turn when they later became husband and wife. The movie How I Spent My Summer Vacation, initially created for television and released in the United Kingdom under the title Deadly Roulette Seeking New Horizon, showcased Wagner's versatility on the silver screen. In 1968, Wagner returned to Italy to undertake a caper film alongside the captivating Raquel Welch, titled The Biggest Bundle of Them All. Despite a star-studded lineup, the film fell short of achieving the desired success, prompting Wagner to navigate the unpredictable currents of the industry. 
Against his initial reluctance in 1967, Lou Wasserman of Universal persuaded Wagner to venture into television. This led to Wagner's series debut in It Takes a Thief from 1968 to 1970 on ABC TV. Despite reservations, Wagner's foray into television, guided by Wasserman, became a turning point. The success of It Takes a Thief, where he acted alongside Fred Astaire as his on-screen father, marked a comeback that solidified his standing in the industry. Wagner's outstanding performance even earned him an Emmy nomination for Best TV Actor. In the subsequent years, Wagner delved into a diverse array of projects. He starred in the comedy Don't Just Stand There in 1968 with Mary Tyler Moore, followed by the racing car drama Winning in 1969, where he shared the screen with Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. Despite the variety of roles, Wagner chose not to audition for the iconic James Bond role, believing it wasn't the right fit for him. Wagner's television career reached its peak in the mid-1970s with the CBS TV series Switch from 1975 to 1978, where he starred opposite Eddie Albert, Sharon Gless, and Charlie Callis. This success further led to his involvement in the creation of the immensely popular TV series Charlie's Angels, where he and Natalie Wood held a 50% share. Yet amid his journey, legal battles over profits emerged. Reflecting on his career in 1985, Wagner acknowledged the struggle of finding character roles. Despite this, he expressed contentment with the international quality projected in his roles from 1968 to 1971. It was during this pivotal period that Robert Wagner's career laid its foundations, setting the stage for the diverse and enduring journey that would follow. Amidst the evolving landscape, Wagner made a notable appearance in the TV movie Love Among Thieves in 1987, sharing the screen with the legendary Audrey Hepburn. This showcased his continued presence in the entertainment industry, underlining his adaptability. Further demonstrating his versatility, Wagner collaborated with Pierce Brosnan in the miniseries remake of Around the World in 80 Days in 1989 and took on a supporting role in Tom Mankiewicz's film Delirious in 1991. However, it was his role in Dragon the Bruce Lee Story in 1993 where Wagner portrayed a producer that brought him wider recognition on the theatrical stage. Strengthening his commitment to diverse storytelling, Wagner played love letters with Stephanie Powers. Additionally, the enduring popularity of their on-screen partnership was highlighted as they reprised their iconic heart-to-heart -heart characters in a series of TV movies. The late 1990s witnessed a significant upswing in Wagner's film career, notably with his portrayal of Dr. Evil's henchman No. 2 in the Austin Powers series, starring Mike Myers. Beyond the silver screen, Wagner assumed the role of the host for Fox Movie Channel's Hour of Stars, featuring original television episodes of the 20th Century Fox Hour, a series he had been part of in his early career. In 2005, Wagner took on the role of television spokesman for the Senior Lending Network, later serving as a spokesman for the Guardian First Funding Group, both reverse mortgage lenders. These roles not only added another dimension to his career, but also showcased Wagner's ability to adapt and thrive across different facets of the entertainment industry. In the year 2007, Wagner made a noteworthy contribution to the BBC AMC series Hustle, where he portrayed a cunning Texan. This role not only showcased his smooth television persona, but also added a layer of charm to his diverse repertoire of characters. His acting journey continued with a portrayal of President James Garfield in the comedy horror film Nether Beast Incorporated in the same year. Additionally, he took on a recurring role as a wealthy suitor in the sitcom Two and a Half Men. As Wagner gracefully entered his later years, he made memorable guest appearances in 13 episodes of NCIS, where he played Anthony Donato Sr. This not only highlighted his continued significance on television, but also showcased his ability to captivate audiences with his on-screen presence. While set to take on the role of Charlie in the 2011 remake of Charlie's Angels, Wagner unfortunately had to step away from the project due to scheduling conflicts. Despite any past differences, Wagner and Raquel Welch, his co-star from 50 years prior, 
reunited on the 2017 Canadian series, Date My Dad. This heartwarming reunion underscored the enduring nature of connections formed in the entertainment industry, emphasizing the lasting bonds forged over decades. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. On the misty morning of November 29, 1981, the ocean whispered its secrets as Natalie Wood's lifeless body drifted near the dinghy, just a mile from the yacht's splendor. The 43-year-old starlet's blood told a tale of excess, with alcohol coursing through her veins and fresh bruises adorning her limbs. The official account claimed she perished in a tragic attempt to board the dinghy while intoxicated. Yet the mystery unfolded like a noir thriller, challenging the narrative. Natalie's husband, Robert Wagner, painted a picture of innocence to the police, claiming she retired early. But as the investigation deepened, the story unraveled. In a second interview, Wagner's recollection wavered, revealing a walk onto the veranda for fresh air. Was it a slip of memory or a deliberate deflection? The plot thickened with incongruities. Natalie's crippling fear of water clashed with the notion of her attempting a late-night dinghy boarding. Seven to eight glasses of wine flowed through her the night she died, according to the coroner. As Dr. Thomas Noguchi's autopsy hinted at a mishap, questions arose. Why did Noguchi downplay Wood's high blood alcohol level and injuries? Was there a concerted effort to shield Wagner? The corridors of suspicion echoed with the whispers of foul play. The coroner's reluctance to implicate Wagner added a layer of darkness to a seemingly straightforward case, leaving the world to wonder. Did Natalie Wood's tragic end truly result from a fateful, drunken stumble? Or was there a more sinister tale hiding beneath the waves? Remember, Robert Wagner is now over 90. Try not to gasp when you see him. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Robert Wagner's Last Days In the inspiring tale of Robert Wagner, a beloved individual, his unwavering courage and resilient spirit illuminated even the darkest moments of his relentless battle against a formidable illness. Recently, his family shared the heart-wrenching news of his passing, marking the conclusion of a valiant struggle. Katie Wagner, his daughter, bravely disclosed the challenging journey that began with Robert's diagnosis in 2020. He faced a rare and formidable foe, follicular adenocarcinoma, a type of thyroid cancer. The path became even more arduous as subsequent medical evaluations revealed the presence of Lino's cancer, adding complexities to his health. Undeterred, Robert Wagner faced this adversity with unyielding determination, navigating through a series of exhaustive treatments and examinations. Despite the challenges, he utilized his platform in both traditional media and social spheres to raise awareness about these debilitating diseases. In a tragic turn of events reported in November 2023, the cancer resurfaced, this time affecting his vocal cords. A visible scar on his throat served as a poignant reminder of the surgeries endured in the relentless battle. Multiple small tumors in his liver further worsened his condition, rendering him unable to speak or walk in his final days. Even in the face of such grim circumstances, Robert Wagner maintained a connection with his adoring fans through Instagram. He shared glimpses of his life moments with his partner, captivating locals, and imparting uplifting quotes. This served as a powerful testament to his resilience. During his recent hospitalization, Robert Wagner, despite his unwavering efforts, eventually succumbed to the illness. Nevertheless, his legacy endures as an everlasting source of inspiration for countless individuals worldwide. His unyielding pursuit of passion, love, and life exemplifies that even amid a terminal illness, one can continue embracing the pursuits that ignite their soul. This stands as a testament to the incredible strength and spirit of Robert Wagner. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.